The Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we are all baptized by one spirit into one body and given gifts for a variety of ministries for the common good. After prayerful deliberation, we of Hope Lutheran have called Jill Sherwood to serve in the position of Director of Youth and Family Ministry. Our Lord Jesus, who came among us as a servant, calls us to faith and a life of loving service to our neighbors. Jill, you come among us as one invited to serve alongside us as a gift from God to inspire us to love and good works. Jill, in the presence of this assembly, will you commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility and the confidence that it comes from God? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you be diligent in your use and study of the Holy Scriptures and faithful in prayer and worship? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you faithfully and reverently execute the duties of your ministry to the honor of God and the benefit of the members of this congregation and community? I will, and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. Congregation, please rise as you're able. People of God, will you receive Jill into this ministry as one sent to serve in the Church of Jesus Christ? We will, and we ask God to help us. Will you pray for her, help and honor her for her work's sake, and in all things strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ? We will, and we ask God to help us. Jill, I now declare you installed as the Director of Youth and Family Ministry. Almighty God bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace, that you may be a faithful servant of Christ. Amen. Amen. And now let us lift Jill up to God in prayer. Word of truth, as you called apostles and evangelists, pastors and teachers to instruct, comfort, admonish, and care for us, so you have called Jill. Fill her with wisdom and patience, with love and with faithfulness to your word, that she may with gladness teach, comfort, counsel, and guide your people to maturity. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now let's welcome Jill with our applause. Yay! All right. Well, Happy New Year. And Merry Christmas. It's not that we haven't gotten to taking the tree down or anything. It's still Christmas in the church. It's the second Sunday of Christmas of the church year and also the last day of Christmas. Tomorrow we begin the season of Epiphany. And John, I think, is the perfect text for a day like today. Because although Christmas seems to be over, and even in the church it will be over starting tomorrow, 
John reminds us that Christmas is not limited to a particular time and place long ago. It's not just a season we celebrate once a year. We don't have to have trees up and decorated or our nativities with baby Jesus present at the center for it to be Christmas. The gift and the good news of Christmas come to us every single day of our lives. In our reading from John today, we hear that the God of all time, the creator of all, the one who was and is and is to come, who has been present in fire and cloud and in sheer silence, is now present in the world in a new way, in a specific and intimate human way, in flesh. The word brings the gift of life to the world. In the beginning of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we hear a lot about Jesus the person, the baby born and the man baptized. John's account is a bit more abstract and includes much more symbolism. So when we find ourselves thinking of Jesus only as the man who lived thousands of years ago, John's gospel does a wonderful job reminding us that God in Jesus was and is so much more. Jesus was in the beginning with God, bringing all things into being. I think we often focus on the stories of Jesus found in the Gospels, thinking of his time in Bethlehem, Jerusalem, and everywhere in between. But Christ is so much more, and his coming to these specific places means so much more. The NRSV translation of verse 14 that we read says, And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. We might also be familiar with the translation, The word became flesh and dwelt among us, as we read on our bulletin cover. The Greek word translated lived or dwelt means to tabernacle which can mean dwell among, live among, or more literally, to pitch a tent and stay a while. So Eugene Peterson, who wrote the message version of scripture, translates that same verse in this way. The word was made flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son generous inside and out, true from start to finish. I'm not sure if you have fond associations with your neighborhoods, but this translation helps us to imagine God's presence wherever we are. Whether we love our neighborhood or can't wait to leave it, whether we love our neighbors or are watching with hopeful expectation for a telltale for sale sign to come up, whether we experience love in our neighborhoods or can't really even name two people, whether we live in a high-rise apartment building or out in the middle of nowhere, God is there where we are. Because John's birth narrative reminds us, this time of year in particular, that Jesus is more than just a baby born. Jesus is from the beginning. Jesus is the one through whom life has come into being. Jesus is the word of God. Jesus is life and light that no darkness can overcome. Jesus is specific and Jesus is cosmic. Jesus is historical and way beyond our constructs of time and place. Can we imagine Jesus pitching a tent in our neighborhood? What about the neighborhood on the other side of the tracks? or the neighborhood we find ourselves envying. Jesus pitches a tent in the neighborhood of broken down trailer homes and in refugee camps and military encampments. That's what the word was made flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood means. That's what incarnation looks like, what God with us means. That's the light and the life that no darkness can overcome. The cosmic creating God as human, choosing to dwell with us. 
It means God's presence can be encountered in these neighborhoods and these neighbors and in us. And within the promise that God is found in neighborhoods and neighbors far and wide and close to home is the promise that we hear in our first reading from Jeremiah, that God will gather the scattered. Jeremiah was a prophet during the exile proclaiming judgment and hope. He spoke these words that we heard today during one of the worst times for Israel. I don't know about you, but it seems to me we sure are a scattered bunch. I've heard people lamenting the divisiveness that has taken hold of this nation and it seems other parts of the world for years now. We have been scattered and we continue to scatter ourselves across physical, political, and racial divides. Yet here, there is hope that God will gather us all up. What would it look like to live as though one day we'll all be gathered together? How might we treat other children of God knowing that God will gather them up with us? As we hear later in John 14, Jesus is preparing a place for us, making ready our final home with him in the Father's house, which has many dwelling places. Yet the incarnation, Jesus coming into the world as the word made flesh, means that first, Jesus makes his home here with us. Jesus brings home the ultimate sense of belonging to the children of God here and now. It's interesting to note that this passage is not just about Jesus. John's presence as witness is important to pay attention to, I think. In fact, as much as the Gospels vary in their telling of God incarnate, all four of the Gospels tell about John. It makes me think he is essential to the story. Although he's only human, his work of pointing to Christ, of baptizing, witnessing, and testifying is important. Maybe the point being that our work, although only human, is essential for the telling and enacting of God's story of love for the world. The gifts of Christmas come to us every day, and we experience the good news of God made flesh who moved into the neighborhood in the word, the sacraments, in forgiveness, in community, and in creation. Christmas has not come and gone. It does not end today. Sure, we take down our trees and put away the decorations until next year. But Christmas miracles happen every single day. God pours infinite love into finite reality and fills our lives with grace and truth every single day. And every time this happens, and every time we testify to it, we know and the world comes to know that Christmas is not a day. It is not only a season. It is the truth that brings us life and grace. In Jesus' name. <laughs>